This is Crucial's new X10 USB-C SSD, and it's twice as fast as most USB-C SSDs on the market. How? Well, it's pretty simple. They're finally utilizing the USB-C 20 gigabit per second connection rather than the 10 gigabit per second connection that basically every other drive available right now uses. To give it its full and stupid name, it's USB 3.2 Gen 2x2. Ridiculous. Anyway, let's have a quick look at this, then check out the performance. It's important to note that this isn't the same as the now two-year-old Crucial X10 Pro. This non-Pro is in a rather fetching blue, albeit it's the same shape, being, well, literally palm-sized, not much thicker than two coins stacked together, and sporting a USB-C port on one side and a little loop for a lanyard on the corner. Of course, you have the Crucial and Micron logos on the front. The magic of this over, say, a Sabrent drive is that Micron actually makes the NAND flash that goes into their drives. So in theory, you're buying the cream of the crop, the most reliable, the, the best performing stuff. One thing to note here is that this is weather resistant specifically IP65 rated, meaning it can withstand getting at least a little wet without issue, and is even shock rated too. Maybe don't take it swimming though, despite what the fetching colour might suggest, but I, I think that, you know, spilling your coffee on it or something, or, you know, getting it caught out in the rain is fine. Oh, and in the box, you get just the drive and a pretty short USB-C to C cable. So that's the drive. Now let's take a look at the performance. Crucial claims up to 2.1 gigabytes per second in reads, and it seems we're close enough on that front with 1.976 gigabytes per second in crystal disk mark with a Q depth of eight and one thread, and 1.8 gigabytes per second on writes, which is essentially twice as fast as USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gig Crucial X8. I also included a slower Gen 4 SSD uh, here just as a, a point of comparison. With only one thread, you will get a touch less performance, about 1.7 and 1.55 gigabytes per second reads and writes respectively, although that's to be expected as the slower X8 shows the same sort of drop. Interestingly, with a random 4 kilobyte block and a Q depth of 32, you see there's actually no raw performance difference between the X8 and the X10. That shows that this is very similar NAND, but with just a higher maximum bandwidth on the controller, and that's about it. The same goes for a Q depth of 1, where interestingly the X8 actually offers slightly better read performance, only 32 megabytes per 33 megabytes per second versus 25 megabytes per second, but still. Using ESSSD always yields lower results, even in sequential testing, hence the peak of 1.8 gigabytes per second on reads and 1.67 gigabytes per second on writes from this X10, and the 820 and 800 megabytes per second from the X8. Luckily, I do have some valid Gen 3 SSD results to compare to here, and the X10 is actually getting kinda close. Like, it's still a gigabyte off from the Gen 3 drives on reads, but considering this is an external USB drive, that's not bad. With a random 4 kilobyte block size and a single thread, you'll find, much like with Crystal Disk Mark, that the two USB drives are functionally tied. In fact, they're exactly tied on writes at 67.3 megabytes per second exactly, with only the tie-breaking in the older X8's favour no less on writes. With 64 threads, you do get a bit more performance, although again the results between the USB SSDs are functionally tied, with the X10 eking out a 13 megabyte per second advantage on rice, but the X8 getting that back and then some with the reads. The only difference here is the top end bandwidth. Looking at the ATTO disk benchmark, you can see that quite clearly. For the smaller block sizes, anything smaller than 16 or 32 kilobytes, you're going to get identical performance on the X8 as on the X10. It's only when the higher bandwidth kicks in, quite suddenly no less, around the 16 to 32 kilobyte blocks, do you get a marked improvement in performance right around two gigabytes per second, up from the one gigabyte per second on the X8. 
I do find it interesting that the curves are much smoother on these external drives compared to internal M.2 drives, even Gen 3 drives. As for real world file transfers, that's at around one gigabyte per second on the X10 versus around 660 megabytes per second on the X8, which isn't as fast as I was expecting, to be honest. The drive that it's copying from can do four gigabytes per second, no problem. And in the synthetic test, they were able to get to the full two gigabytes per second or so, no problem, but actually copying files? Well, that's on the slower side. At least it's nearly twice as fast as the X8 here too. I did also run my duplication stress test, which stresses reads and writes simultaneously, and lets us see how big the SLC cache is, and for this drive you'll get full performance for the first 400 gigabytes or so of non-stop writing, at least on this 2 terabyte model. The revert rate is around 175 megabytes per second for this test, which to be fair is still pretty fast, especially for an external USB SSD like this. Spreading the writing out should help a fair bit there, and this isn't quite the same as just writing to the drive, so temper your expectations a little. On the whole then, if you liked the X8 or X9, you'll like this just a little bit more. Depending on the scenario, you can indeed get up to twice the performance out of this thing, and if that's useful to you, have at it. This does come at a price premium compared to the very similar X9. Even looking at MSRP, it looks like the X9 is £130 for this 2TB size versus £160 for this X10. And the X10 Pro, which is also a Gen 2x2 drive by the way, is only £10 more for the same size. Still, if you'd prefer the fetching blue and want to save a tenner compared to the Pro, this X10 is a nice shout. If you don't feel that you need the extra speed, saving, at least at the time of filming, £55 for the same size, well, the X9 is a great shout as well. Personally, I don't know that I would be willing to spend functionally double, or at least 50% more, to get that speed boost. Although, generally speaking, I don't use these sorts of external drives all that often, so I'm not exactly the target market. If you do, does this sort of speed boost warrant the extra cost? Please do let me know in the comments down below, I would love to hear your thoughts. Of course, with that said, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the Crucial X10 uh, non-pro? Is this a drive you're interested in yourself, or would you go with the cheaper X9 or something else entirely? Let me know in those comments. If you want to check this out, I will leave in a global Amazon affiliate link in the description if you're interested. Feel free to hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this one and check out plenty more videos in the end cards when they pop up. And otherwise, that's kind of it. If you want to be able to support the channel, you can pick up my own hardware, the open source response time and latency testing tools at osrtt.com, linked in the description as well. And otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.